Hello. Hi. Hey there, how you doing? Good. Wait, your... Is your thingy moving when you talk? Yeah, if you have a GIF, it does that. Huh, I, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Alright, um... So we'll test out the screen share stuff, see how that goes first. If it doesn't work, then I might have to add you on Origin and do it through that method instead. No, wait, that's not what I wanted. I wanted... Screen, this is just your screen one. No, wait. It was nice of you to turn up, by the way. I had two people that, for some reason, didn't turn up uh, the other four days, so that was fun stuff. That was a new season, but uh, you can't neglect me like this, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Seems to be fine. Looks pretty good, actually. Hopefully it uh, holds up in-game as well. Alright, mm -hmm. so how many seasons have you been playing so far? Uh, how many seasons total? Yeah. Oh, since day one. Okay. So, I guess, uh, you kind of get, you've experienced the whole spectrum, and now we're in the worst season they've ever made. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> really, really good stuff. Um, let's take a look at the look at your stats, and we'll see kind of where you're at. Okay. Um, not too bad. Um, maybe, can you mouse over where it says lifetime games? 4.3. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Um, so you do get some decent top fives, like a, a decent amount of time. Uh, win rate is okay, but uh, I guess you kind of you're more focused on you know just getting tons of kills and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, highest damage is still kind of. I would have expected you to get at least a three K. I would have said. Um, so there must be some things that are holding you back from being able to get that. Now skill based matchmaking does make it a, quite a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, um, I'd say 3k is definitely achievable by most people, you know, if, if you can keep yourself alive and dish out a bit of damage, you know, get those high damage games. It's pretty, it's definitely pretty doable. Anyway, um, we'll jump into some normal games and we'll kind of see. Okay, I'm gonna warm up in fire range real quick. Just give me a sec, let me just check everything. So, yeah, we're gonna be doing ranked kind of after, so maybe one normal game and then uh, we'll do ranked games yeah. for the majority after that. I spent like a, like a minute or two just roaming up. I was replying for a job today, so I didn't warm up yet. Okay. God, it's done so broken. The vault? Yeah. Yeah. Devotion as well, but like, the vault is it more of a power than devotion. I don't know how they manage that. I mean, it's the same thing when it comes to time to kill, but the devotion has a bigger magazine size. It's all about the turbo, though. If you have a turbo, you should win with a devotion. Yeah, it's so easy now. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, for some reason, they just screwed this season up, like, adding stuff in that nobody wants, so... I'm playing so much Bloodhound this season too. Like my Bloodhound play rate used to be like once in a while I'll play with my friends. And now I'm playing like mm. every game. Cause his ult's so powerful now. Yeah, he's a pretty good character right now. I don't know why they keep buffing him over and over again. He was fine before. Now he can just have war hacks like every five seconds, so kind of Yeah, I'm not really sure why they're buffing him this much. It's weird. I'm not excited for when King's Cannon comes back and it's like you constantly have ult. 
Yeah, I'm gonna wait like a week or so, I think, because uh, the way yeah. the rotation works now. I think it was similar last season, they forced you to play the other map, which I hated, because they just ruined it by removing skull time. I skull time was the only thing that broke up the map and made it so you weren't getting third fired all the time. Yeah, like my best games always on Skull Town. Yeah, it's fun as well, actually fighting there, but there's like, nah, you're not allowed fun in this video game. One swipe uh, to our right. Landing on us. Oh, for the love of God, let there be a gun up here. Oh, this is unfortunate. Okay, so I think this game's over. Uh, one thing I will mention, the uh, screen share is pretty jittery. Like, uh, I'll show you what I mean uh, in a second. I, see, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't think this guy will get you, so you can leave if you want. All right. I think I know what I setting out to fix with that. I turn everything on low to get higher FPS. All right, I'm just gonna screen share to you now. I'll show you kind of my perspective on that one. Okay. Right, I'll just play the clip out a bit. You can kind of see that it kind of rubber bands backwards a little bit. It's not happening at the moment, but it's happening like a little bit now and when you go down as well. Yeah, I think that's you a screen, I, mean? I think that's a screen share thing because it was not that as bad. Like that wasn't like in game. Like I did it a little bit in game, but it's not like this bad. So yeah, um, it, it doesn't look like it would be hard for me to actually, you know, let's say if you was in a gunfight and you, you're trying to shoot this guy, if it's jittering all over the place, it would be hard for me to see if you're actually missing your shots or what's going on, you know? Yeah. Are you talking, by the way? Because I can't hear you. Oh, actually, I muted myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a screen share thing. I mean, it doesn't normally do this. Um, because so... in game, it's not like that at all. Yeah, it's kind of like on my end, unfortunately. But yeah, um, it would make it hard for me to actually, you know, see certain things. For example, if it's jitters back at the wrong time when you're like shooting at someone or something, I wouldn't be able to see, you know, if you're actually landing your shots or what. Yeah, I can try. Um, um... I can try going 720-60 and see if that works. Yeah, it doesn't have to be amazing quality, just not laggy at all. Well. Uh, share screen. Seven twenty sixty. You can try that out. Okay. So... One thing I want to bring up with this game, so you did notice that there was a team kind of landing on you um, by looking around a bit. Now, you didn't check all directions, but uh, I think in this case there was only one team, so it didn't matter too much. So you can see that he has this red trail predator. Um, mm -hmm. Your team, if we if you looked at them at the start, they, they definitely didn't look like there was anything too special. Um, so you're at least going to deal with one predator player, so a, a predator player can be equal to maybe, you know, 
two of your teammates or something, maybe even more potentially, because of the they just have so much game knowledge. So landing on a predator player, um, pretty risky move because he can probably take out maybe one or two of your teammates, and he's going to be tough to take down. So it might be uh, smart to land somewhere where you don't have to compete directly with him. You know, when you land, because he's going to know where a good spot is to land and get loot immediately, and then you know it can be a rough time. Mm -hmm. But in general, like competing with players, you know, right after drop isn't too great as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to avoid, or I would tend to avoid if I were you, uh, players that are obviously uh, pretty skilled, you know, like predator players or something. If you're not up to their level and your teammates don't, don't look like they're up to it as well, because it just it just basically means that you're going to guarantee die. I mean, look, this guy dies instantly because he's not really uh, sure where to land. He ends up landing on some guy and dies straight away. Mm hmm. So your star isn't too bad, you do get a 301. Got down into this guy. Get a little bit of damage into him. But yeah, he trades quite a bit more damage into you. And that's, that's the thing, like... see, He's kind of stuttering, but... Yeah, you do get a little bit of damage into him, but he trades way more damage into you than you did to him. You can see he almost kills you. Um, mm -hmm. So that's another thing with, you know, skill level of players. You gotta be careful about this kind of stuff. Because the thing is, if you had better gear, for example, it might uh, give you a better chance of fighting this. I'm pretty sure when, when you landed, somebody had a Mastiff or something. It could have been that I heard the Mozambique there, but it seemed like a Mastiff, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah this is a pretty pretty damn rough landing. If you if you find that you have tough competition on landing, just land somewhere else. Like, for example, at the back there instead. You know, that you got the big build in the corner, just land a little bit further back so you don't have that direct competition. Yeah. But anyway, um, it, it was a good effort trying to take him out, but uh, yeah, your teammate died instantly, so that would have been... Yeah, pretty tough. Yeah, we'll we'll see if we get some better games in. All right, and hopefully the uh, screen share is better as well. Mm -hmm. and you can see my screen now. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, great, probably. The top any rank to play with you think I should play with more normal. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, what rank are you at the moment? Uh, it's over one just because of the rank reset. I yeah, went down to um, silver too. Silver won't be that bad anyway, so you can just jump in there if uh, you want. Um, yeah, I'm playing Wraith today. I'm playing Rampart as well, because she's so overpowered late game. Yeah, um, she's she's kind of a fun character. Um, I don't know though, about the whole meta thing. You know, it's kind of kind of campy with too much damage going out. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know they added Hollis Rays. Follow my path to win. Follow my path. Oh, that's a quick queue. I'm so used to late, like, late season and, like, queues for, like, plat, where it's, like, an hour per queue. So that stuff about competition definitely applies to ranks. <laughs> you know, you want to avoid tough competition on the drop. Yeah. What was your highest rank you've gotten so far? Plat three. I always feel like right. midway through plat three than plateau. Hmm. Um. In the previous seasons, let's say season three, what was your highest rank then? I think plat three. I have to right. double check. I'm gonna land. I'm gonna land us in uh, the no name area over there. Then we can rotate there. Here we go. Ready up. Are there any squads near us? There was only three in the ship, so there probably won't be that many people on this side of the map. Ah, uh, one team thermal.
Seems a lot better this time on the screen share. Yeah, I think 720 is the, what's the call. 1080 is uh, quite quite um, tough on your PC, to be honest. It's a lot of performance required for it. Yeah, and streaming on Twitch as well at the same time. Yeah. Spitfire here. Syringe here. Guess we're not the first ones here. Could have been though. Not blaming anyone, but you know who you are. Right. Now this is what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, thank you. No problem. I don't see my thermal anymore. They may have gone to the train area. What are you using to stream with your graphics card or CPU? Uh, I forgot. Maybe CPU? But I forgot. I, have a fr I had one of my friends help me set it up. And so, like, he's the one who's definitely smarter at it. Most people stream with the GPU because it's less, you know, on your computer. I'm not sure, though, what, what the setup could be. But uh, you might want to consider lowering your texture streaming budget because it will allow it to run more smoothly. Wingman here. It's in your video settings. Yeah, I'll probably take a look at that. I need a backpack. Backpack here. Level two. Thank you. Don't worry, won't be no problem. Shield here. Never mind. Okay, so I can be worth time for that. Thank you. You got it. Are you finding that thing train yard? Thank you. Oh no, it says light. Let's explore this way. Our 301 here. here. Uh, someone, some team landed Harvester or is at Harvester right now? Because I see an open spy bin. Let's go this way. There. Sniper stock here. Level two. I need it. You want to push into Harvester? I saw a team at Harvester, I think, or near Harvester. Oh, uh, do you guys see a shotgun bolt? They're on me right here. Okay, I'm coming. Thanks. Keep ping.
cracked. Down. I have extra cells if you guys need any. I guess I have any extra uh, energy. I only have like I have like eighty on a volt. No, I don't have any energy. Alright. Energy ammo. Anybody need energy ammo? Alright, thank you. I'll you are you on that? Found an extended energy mag here. Level one. Were there only two in that squad, or where's the other box at? Oh, uh, there's a lifeline across the, um, over there. Over there. Just somewhere over there. I fucking, yeah, sure. I wunked up your ass with the vault. Did we raise that? That means there's a squad over there, right? Yep. Yep, they're right there. I think I saw a Watson. One broke. I'm gonna portal. I'm gonna portal it. Let's put those in. I'm gonna get us to this rock. Portal's good. I'll cover, I'll cover. There's a port. Reset. They're revolting. Covering you. Bring touch. Need to recharge my shields. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. Enemy OC. Good shit. Strike out. Ten seconds to the ring. It's close at least. Recharging the shield. Careful, we come behind. Go to zone, go to zone, go to zone. I'll cover for you. Just play this high ground over here. Play this high ground. We just hold them out on high ground. That team from um over there has a Watson. Uh, GB on the uh, thing. Over there. Is that a blue?
get high ground. Let's get high ground. I think it's still fighting over here. You can try to poke. Ah, uh, zipline. They zipped over there. Check behind us. I think I heard footsteps. I was that was you, Octane. No, no, to our right, to our right, to our right, to our right. To our right. To the top or bottom? Ah, uh, bottom, bottom, bottom. I hear them. I hear them healing. They're right there. I've cracked, I've cracked. Okay. Come over here, come over here, I'm gonna portal us out, I'm gonna portal us out. Okay, I'll do you have Octane, do you have like any energy ammo you can give me? I have zero. I have nineteen bullets and a uh, vault. Cracked. I don't need any meds. I have, uh, I have extra if you need. To our right, I hear, I hear some fighting to our right. When I was so far, it's finished, finish, finish, finish. Finish the self-rise, finish the self-rise. Blow us, blow us. On tracks, on tracks, near tracks. Feels good when the plan actually works. Next Get us up for us. Only two other squads left. I have a uh, forty five bullets on a vault total. Need to recharge my play safe, play safe, play safe, play safe. Come to me, come to me, come to me. We set on tunnel. Uh, squads flooding in. 
We can might we might be able to pinch them because there's a team at the back building. Yeah, let let them do their thing, and then hopefully they start fighting. We can third party it. Just hide behind this rock. Let's go this way. Don't peek, don't peek. I have portal in four. Drop your shield, I'll give you my red. I have a triple take, so I should be able to get it up quick. I'm a peek. Uh, I hit, hit caustic 80, I think. Drop, 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 drop. I need sniper ammo. How much do you have? How much sniper ammo do you have? I have one bullet. Thank you. I'm 43 from red. So I just need one more shot. The left line's cracked. I'm gonna put in the zone. Take portal, take portal. Portal's good, portal's good. There's enemy over there, there's enemy over there. Right there, right there. Cracked. Push it, push, 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 push. Okay, guys, I don't think I win this. <laughs> you don't have a chance, you've got no ammo. Good game. Interesting game. That was, uh, I haven't seen something like that for a while, actually. Now, if I had ammo at the end, I think I, I, think I could have won. Alright, I'm gonna screen share this to you now, give me a sec. Hey, go for it. Nice, that's actually good, because we'll be able to see kind of uh, how the difficulty, you know, level ranked as well, so that'd be good. There'll be quite a few decent players still in gold at the moment, so, uh, could be interesting. Mm. Um, right. So, there's definitely quite a lot to talk about in this one, which is nice. Um, it's a pretty long game. So... First of all, uh, let's cover the specific rank you was in just for this game. So, uh, just reset. You know, you're in silver. Um, now, the thing is, you only lose 12. You know, if you if you were to die straight at the beginning yeah. of the game and in silver, 
um, which is 24 once you reach gold. So it's, it's a little bit more once you do reach gold. But in silver, because you lose so little, um, it's, it's better to play more aggressively, like especially in, in bronze as well. You lose literally nothing, so you might yeah. as well just drop, kill loads of people, die, and then repeat. Uh, it's very similar with silver, actually. Um, you don't really lose that much. If you get one kill, you're minus two, so it's not a, a huge deal. And you probably end up doing better than that overall anyway. So this sort of rank in future, if you do find yourself at this in like silver or something, um, you should just literally just drop somewhere where you're going to find a lot of people, you know, a lot earlier, maybe at Capital or something, you know, Fragment East or West. Somewhere there would probably be a good drop, just kill loads of people and rank up that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, you end up going for like a far out drop, which is better for the higher ranks because, you know, you're going to face uh, some tougher times, more competition, stuff like that. Kind of landing pretty far. You did notice the team that was, you know, coming out behind you, yeah. And you can kind of see that uh, you, you were the last squad in the ship. Just keep an eye on the uh, amount in the ship at, at the end. There, you can see that people are jumping round about now, so they're going to go somewhere in this area. And thermal's a pretty uh, popular spot. There's usually used a team there in a lot of cases. So you did spot them out. Um, now, one thing I noticed, you, you asked your team if there's people around. You should check yourself. Um, even if you're the jump master, you can still check. So. Um, as once you, you see when, once your speed's like above I'd say 140 it's at 145 right now um, just go down get yourself a bit of speed right once you're, you've got enough speed just go horizontal and then use that time to look around you've probably got like uh, 3 to 5 seconds right about there something like that take a good look around see how many teams are around you you want to you always be independent on you know a lot of your aspects of your gameplay you don't want to rely on your teammates to tell you where people are you better check yourself because there are going to be times where people don't check or they don't tell you or don't give you the right information so do check yourself make sure you look around i guess because you're the jump master that you're probably thinking i can't really look around too much but trust me um i'm probably the jump master in the majority of my games and i always have enough time to check around me and see what's going on right. this will be especially useful when you get to higher ranks because you need to know how much competition you have and where the landing and stuff like that um, it, I will mention like the way you do check around you as well. Um, for example, you only kind of looked to the right and, and a little bit behind you. Yeah. Um, in some cases, people will be above you. Like they dropped a little bit later than you, so they'll be directly above you. And if you don't look up, you won't see them. So that you might get surprised by a team suddenly landing right on top of you and you weren't expecting it. So uh, make sure you look left, right, and above you once you, uh, you know, coming in for the drop. Even if you're a jump master, try to get into the habit of, uh, you know, getting your speed, then go in a straight line, look around, see where people are at. It will definitely be very useful for you if you if you're going up to the higher ranks. But anyway, so we know there's a team that you did spot them out, which is good. Um, you decide to land at the back. Now the thing is, um, because of where you decided to land, they basically have the better spot because there's much more loot here. And it's higher tier loot as well. You're kind of on the outskirts where, you know, the loot you're going to get is only going to be lower tier because it's not, you know, a, a main named area. Any sort of named area. I don't know if you pulled up the map. Yeah, you did. So every, anything with a name, so like Harvester, Staging, yeah. whatever, they all have, tend to have much better loot than an area, like a little town or something that isn't named. So just bear that in mind. You always want to land... I, I'd say in, in mostly ranked games, uh, definitely land somewhere with a name just so you get better loot. You don't want to land on like really bad gear and end up getting kind of screwed over for that. So yeah, the, the people at Thermal uh, in general are most likely to have better loot than you guys do. Okay. Um, you know, you, you held on to this triple take Mastiff combo for quite some time. I mean, you did walk past some guns that would have been pretty you know, decent. I mean, anything really is pretty good. The triple take's okay, but even something like some kind of automatic weapon gives yeah. you uh, a good way to punish people. For example, let's say they're rushing at you. Um, you'd be able to punish pretty well with some kind of automatic, even something like a Spitfire, you know. Um, the, the, the weapon combo you have right now is kind of like mid to long range and then very close range. You don't have, like, you know, a gun for punishing people that are trying to push up on you real close. If, if they're kind of far away, maybe it'll work with the triple take. Once mm -hmm. they get kind of close, um, you don't really have a good way of punishing. The Mastiff won't deal enough damage. So, you know, if they have a Vault or something, you know, you, you don't really have a way to compete with it properly. So you guys decide to move in. Now, two of you don't have a shield. I mean, you, you do get a shield off dealing 50 damage, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty rough to possibly take a fight with these guys. Most likely, their entire team has a shield, so they at least have a minor advantage over you in that respect. So you, you, it's probably best to not fight them right now, avoid them, and try to get some shield before you do, do end up finding a shield in here. And later on, Rampart does find a shield as well. So, But yeah, if you fought those guys without your shields, it could have been uh, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. 
right here is a wingman skull pierce would have been a nice swap out for maybe the triple take and then you have a you have your ma you have your uh, master for close range and you have your wingman for like well, kind of works at any range really it just it's just one of those guns where you have to be able to aim pretty well with it that's the only thing but yeah for me if that was me i would have took the wingman right there for sure Yeah, Rampart for some reason doesn't swipe that shield straight away. I don't. Yeah, she does get it in the end, thankfully. Or well, she gets it from somewhere else. I'm not sure. It happens so much on the elos. I literally, there were, I lost the game because I pinged a blue shield for like five minutes for a pathfinder with no shield, and he didn't take it and got one clipped. Yeah. So yeah, um, in general, this sort of rank, we want to be pathing towards where we're going to find people. So I, I, there was people at thermal, but because uh, of your um, bad loot in the early game, it wouldn't have been really worth to try to fight them. Uh, maybe if you could get some damage on, on them with the triple take and then uh, get, you, get your shield and maybe from then you'd be able to fight, but yeah, yeah, it'd be better to find some stuff and then think about fighting. So you, you've got your stuff now that you could recheck them or see if there's somebody there, but uh, if we remember where the flight path was from the start of the game, there's your flight path. If you want to find people, so you're at staging right now, uh, we need to be like on this line or near this line, so going to Harvester, um, train yard and then maybe path into towards fragments you you'll find people around there for sure mm -hmm. uh, let's go back just a little bit so you do end up finding this team it might be the thermal team it's kind of hard to tell where they actually came from um, you, you did keep hold of that triple take which I was a little bit surprised about I guess uh, it's something you're kind of familiar with and you feel like you're pretty comfortable with it you know yeah. it, it did do you quite a bit of good during that game I won't lie it did do, do you some justice you did quite a bit of damage with the triple take I say the majority of your damage was with the triple take um, but it was also because you kind of kept your distance I'd be trying to you know get in close and, and personal with a lot of people but you kind of stay back which is fine in some cases you know high ranks that's more beneficial in lower ranks, you just want to get get your kill kill points and stuff as early as possible, and then just chill. Even if you do die, um, you don't really lose that much anyway. So you just got to yeah. just play super aggro, get loads of kills, and then if you do die, whatever, go next. And then if you do get five kills or assists mixed in there, then from then you can just chill if you want, or keep fighting. It's up to you. Keep fighting would be the riskier option, though, of course. All right. So I have no idea where this team came from. Maybe Harvester or something. They they could have come from anywhere. But uh, yeah, you definitely saw that they had looted over there, or someone had looted over there. I remember you calling it out during the game. So I guess your teammates were like, okay, you saw maybe people over there, I'm going to go. So they did split from you, unfortunately, so... This could have been potentially bad if you know if they got engaged on you didn't quite get here fast enough, but luckily it looks like you just arrived just about in time. So starting this fight, your teammate knocked this guy who you just appeared in front of you here. So that's a good start to the fight. You've already got a knock in there, but you lost one in the process as well. Yeah, this is kind of perfect where the triple take actually came in super handy. Because if you had a Mastiff there, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to finish yeah. that guy off. Um, but to be honest, you probably still would have won this fight because um, the knock over here that your teammate got, and then he got the guy kind of lowish as well. So it was fine that you did get that guy. Um, if you did have the Mastiff, it wouldn't be possible to finish him, so it's getting him low and then going after the next guy is also fine. Yeah, do, do a good job of chasing after this guy and finishing him off. Um, if, if you didn't you know, have the range to finish off the lifeline, though, you would have still killed these two, and then maybe she would have she would have even run away and been a solo for a long time. Or you might have been able to get the pop on there as well. So I think you would have won this regardless of whether or not you had the Mastiff there. But uh, pretty well played. Um, I, I don't think your aim is maybe one of the big issues with your gameplay from what I saw. Um, maybe uh, maybe with some other weapons, let's say the Wingman, you're not so great with those. I've not really seen you use them, I don't know. Um, but yeah, at least from what I've seen, aim didn't seem to be a huge issue with your gameplay. Yeah, I'm very uh, off and on with the Wingman. So uh... Yeah. Some days I'm really good, some days I'm just trash. I'd say in lower lower levels of uh, ranked player as well, it's probably best to, especially if you feel like you're the one that's doing most of the damage and get most of the kills, to carry a respawn beacon, because if your teammates die, um, you can just get them back into the game then. Might be worth taking them. 
I see a lot of the, you know, pros and stuff, they always seem to have at least one beacon on them, mm -hmm. just in case one of them dies. All right. So starting with this fight anyway, you spot this guy on the bridge now. A little bit early, you wasn't really sure whether or not your team raised the bridge, but it's impossible because you can see it just on the edge of your frame there that both of your teammates are here. And yeah. you need to be on the bridge to activate it. So you could literally just sort of close the death box, look at the minimap, your teammates are nowhere near there. So yeah, must be an enemy team over there that's activated the bridge. Spot that guy, get good hit on him. Now, you was trying to, like, you are thinking about pushing up here uh, after breaking that guy's shield, but if we look at the map, how open it is on the right side, yeah. It's going to be kind of hard for you to get up there, and by the time you do get up there, he would have popped the battery by then, so any kind of advantage you had over them, it's not really going to matter too much by the time you actually get there, because the distance between where that guy was and where you are right now is pretty big, so uh, it's up to you whether or not you push, but by the time you do push, you would have shielded up, so, you know, it might just be equal grounds, you know, you, you could also get punished for being caught out in the open as well. Mm -hmm. So you could have got shielded up a little bit as you was running in here to drop the portal. Ball's in a good spot, though, um, probably as close to the rock as you could have got. Okay, Rampart goes down. Not sure really how. I think. Um, Is it G seven? I think it was because he. Yeah, I think it was because he, he was on the gun and his amp shields went down and he's stuck on the gun rather than watching his health. I guess. Um, so your reaction was to go back and try to support, which was really good, though. So you get a nice hit on him, which kind of gets him low before he even comes through the portal, and then you finish him off. That was really good. So that, that pretty much uh, let your teammate res here because the next guys are going to follow up and chase as well in a second here. Um, I would have probably kept line of sight on them just so you can see them. You don't really need to be behind the rock. You could just use the uh, cover here. Like You can just crouch behind it yeah. and it does give you enough cover. And then you can easily just stand up and see you know, if they are pushing or whatever. Because when you actually do pop the heel, uh, somebody comes through the portal in a second right here. I think he comes through the portal anyway or he disappears. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, no, he just kind of turns up. I didn't hear the portal sound. So this guy turns up as well. You would have seen this guy coming, so you would have been able to punish him, you know, as he's moving through the open. So, yeah, that, that would have been, you know, of course, he was on the right side rather than being behind the rock there. But, yeah, um, this is where another team starts shooting you guys in the back and you decide to get out of there. Hold on. So yeah, with the other team shooting you in the back, you d decide to get disengage, which is actually really smart. Um, a lot of people don't do this because, you know, they just carry on fighting the whole time instead of getting out. So, smart move to back up. I'm not sure if it was just because of what Rampart said or you was going to do this anyway. But yeah, this is exactly what you need to do. There's another team shooting you in the back. You don't want to be sandwiched between them. So, essentially what you're doing now by moving back here is this team that was pushing into you is now fighting the team that kind of shot you in the back. So you're basically sandwiching this team that you're looking at right now between another team. So, yeah, it's a pretty good move. And you actually managed to punish them as well by hitting them pretty hard uh, in the back. I'm not sure why they stayed, but, you know, they got punished for staying. And that could happen to you as well, you know, if you got trapped between two teams. Yeah. So yeah, the, for some reason, they don't pay much attention to you. So they're just basically like, exposing the back to you. Maybe they thought that that team was you. I'm not sure, but... Uh, yeah, they kind of exposed the back to you, so you could have potentially got some big hits on them. So yeah, this is kind of a, it's kind of funny because if you had the Mastiff, you wouldn't be able to do this. Um, mm -hmm. But I say in, you know, other games, having close range fighting power is probably better than, you know, something like medium or long range like you have right now. Um, it, it just kind of work in your favor, I would say, here, yeah, but... Uh... When it comes to high levels of play, it might not be as useful. For example, a master is so powerful in close range that uh, if you had something like a triple ticket, it just wouldn't be able to compete. So you have to kind of get in some knocks on people, hit them up a bit, you decide to back up further. The ring is kind of coming in. It's it's kind of far right now, but you are kind of sitting on the edge, and you can just kind of gatekeep this team you know, as they try to move in as well. got to keep an eye on people potentially blocking you from getting in the zone that's the only issue you got to worry about sometimes especially if you're sniping at people so if you were shooting at people from over here for example 
um, you know, teams from behind you that are in the zone, they might hear that and then, you know, block you in the zone. So let's bear that in mind. So yeah, I'd say with the whole, you know, repositioning and moving around, getting in the zone, all that stuff, that was really good stuff. Um, try to punish this team that's kind of moving across, which is fine. Um, I just kind of, I, I'd say at this point, because of where you are on the map, uh, it's kind of an awkward spot where you have to go through, you know, kind of choke points or open areas. So I'd probably start making my way in now and just go over there. I'd, probably the way you're going is the best, otherwise you have to move through the open. I'll take the balloon, and people are going to hear you coming from the balloon as well. So going this kind of way where you went, um, yeah, basically that way and heading into the zone, that'd be a good option. Now, you do kind of discover this team below you. Now, that was probably the guys you saw kind of moving off to the left earlier. They've got to move in the ring at some point, so if you didn't see them earlier, just, you know, you, you got to be aware of that. Okay, I didn't see the team on the left moving to the ring yet. Maybe they could be somewhere, you know, close by. Yeah. In which case, that, that that was this team right here. They must have moved in and started healing on the edge of the ring or something, yeah. And that's when you call them out. So one thing to note again your teammate uh slap somebody so you can just drop on them you got a knock and he's kind of covering you because he's at the back there so if things went bad you could maybe phase and then uh, reposition but yeah there's only two of them so you can easily take the fight one thing to point out um when if you ever find yourself in this kind of situation i think he kind of used it a little bit but uh not too great so his teammate is knocked right in front of him if you find yourself in a situation with zero cover and you, you, you've literally got nothing to use like this guy has. The only kind of cover you could possibly use is in the zone right there, that little pole. Uh, use your teammates as cover, so you can hide behind his teammates, knock down shield, and use it as cover. It kind of looks like he does do it here a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of yeah. laggy, but he, he does go behind it like there, for example. He, he kind of went behind it a little bit. But yeah, he didn't use it very uh, very well. Like You can actually abuse this quite a lot and, and get quite a lot of damage onto an enemy by using your teammate as cover. But yeah, he doesn't kind of do it too well, to be honest with you. Yeah, he kind of leaves himself open too much. You want to kind of sit behind your teammate and just crouch spam and stuff like that to make yourself out of it. Those knockdown shields have so much um, damage absorption on them that they can, you can really use them for a long time to tank. And he only had a blue, but uh, yeah. Some really strong ones like golds or purples, they got like 750 or more, so it's pretty insane. All right, so you kill these guys. Now, one thing to kind of point out here, uh, if you find that he's kind of trapped in a bad spot, for example, if there was people on the right here, and they've got people on the left already, we know about that. Um, it would kind of not be a viable option for you to go that way, kind of the way you went. Uh, it did work out for you in the end, but uh, versus better players will probably cut you off and prevent you from going that way. Um, so you have to sometimes pick an alternative route, which is going to be safer. So one one kind of path you could have took, you either go back up the hill, kind of where you were before, that could have been an option, you just basically go to the left. Or you can go through the zone behind you, uh, it's only round three, so you should be able to like use your pole, get the speed, go all the way around, and they might not expect that. So sometimes you're going to have to tank a little bit of zone damage in order to reposition more safely. So you could go for something like that. Your team are pretty healthy, so they should be able to run through zone three and reposition. Depends how desperate you are. You know, If you are, really are kind of cornered in a bad spot, sometimes going for a, you know, going through the zone and repositioning, it's not that far, to be honest. You know, With pole movement speed, you should be able to get in, no problem. So you, you decide to go to the right now. If this team was a lot better, they could kind of start moving across as they see you pushing in over here, and they could possibly punish you for that. Uh, they could all be above you, waiting for you on the right side here. But uh, yeah, they don't. They don't. They do that. So yeah, um, you 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 were definitely kind of struggling for ammo at the end of the game here. Like you had basically scrapped the ammo the whole time. Good little poke onto this guy. Uh, Octane, unfortunately, going too ham. I'm not sure why he ran this far in like this, separating from his team, but people, you know, do crazy things sometimes. Yeah. So you, you follow up to try to do something about this. Now, going back a bit earlier, I mean, there's there's only two dead guys here, so that might be the third, you know? So you get, you got to kind of put two and twos together in these games. Okay, what's happening exactly? Is this, you know, another team attacking me, or is this the third that's, you know, was really separated from them? In this case, I'm pretty sure it was the third. So, you know, the, the, the third guy is just kind of trying to keep his distance from you and poke at you guys. There's not really much you can do uh, versus three people for the most part, unless you can, you know, maybe play with some buildings or something, but there isn't really any here, so... Yeah, with there only being one, I, I'm not sure if you figured that out, by the way, the whole, you know, this is from the same team, but he was, like, separated. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's something you got to kind of keep an eye out in your games, figure out exactly what's going on. Because if, if, if this was a new team, it might have been safer to try to pull to a totally different direction, maybe round to the left or something, just to play it safe. But yeah, there was only one guy here. So you do get a little bit of ammo. Ammo situation looking a bit better now, but you'll definitely burn through that pretty quickly. Yeah, especially with the uh, SMG. Yeah, position is really good here. It's not in the zone yet. Um, but yeah, you can basically see everything. You see gas going on over there. You see some guys rising, so you go for the punish, which is nice. I won't worry too much about these guys. Uh, you were definitely trying to like, you know, finish them off as, as hard as you possibly can. But um, you're kind of getting hit as well from somewhere else. Uh, eventually, what, what people tend to do is drop their shield to try to get because obviously you move faster when you drop your shield. You actually notice this guy drops his shield quite a few times because he's trying to crawl somewhere into cover. So like his shield's down right now, for example. Uh, it's important that you land a hard hit on him right now. But as you can see, you rush the shot and you miss and then he brings his shield back up, you see. Yeah. So wait for people to maybe drop their shield if possible uh, a lot of players that don't really know the game as well will probably do make this mistake um, just because they know okay if I drop it I move a lot faster and he's he, but he's basically completely open to you the whole time if he drops his shield for even a second make sure you line up the shot and take a, a good hit on him because he might bring up the shield and the, the gold knockdown um, takes a lot of damage to get through and obviously we don't want him to self res then you hear people below you. Try to figure out exactly what the situation is. You know how many people are below you. If you drop down and you drop down to three people, that could be a bit of a problem. So try to figure out exactly what's below you first if you can. So take a little bit of time to figure it out. I say in this case, that didn't really happen. Your teammates committed, so you had to like drop on them as well. Um, and you did kind of go too far, but luckily the guy dropped kind of back into you, so that helped in for you. And you finish that guy off. Somebody else um, got your teammate, I think. No, it was that guy. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it was the... Yeah, yeah, with the Mastiffs at the end. Yeah. So Rampart can probably set up a cover and go for the res right now while you kind of finish this up. All right, so... Because your ammo is so low, I'd prop the swap to the parlor right here. Take the Mastiff as well. It's going to be good for the uh, end game. The triple takes aren't going to be super useful for the late game here. Th this guy has perfect weapons basically for the end game. So I would have uh, swapped this out real quick. Uh, you know, just try, try your best to swap things out. Grab uh, grenades. Grenades going to be very useful as well at the end rings. Um, just, you know, swipe this as fast as possible and get back into fight. Unfortunately, you don't do that. So you have a triple take, which is going to be useless soon because he's going to be very close range combat. It can be kind of used as a shotgun, but you might as well use an actual shotgun. So the Mastiff, that would have been a better pickup, really. And he does have a select fire as well. You probably heard him automatic fire in the uh, Perler as well. So yeah, the Perler is pretty, he's still up there as a very powerful weapon. Yeah. The Vault, I would say, is still better just because of the way it works. I'd say the Vault is kind of like a R301. Uh, mixed with an R99. It has insane damage, but long range as well, which doesn't make any sense, but, you know, respawn. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just it, the main reason we kind of probably would go for that switch is due to ammo. I mean, you, you have so little ammo, you definitely don't want to rely on teammates to give you some as well, because they probably won't have that much. So I would have definitely swapped out there just to play it safe, because you actually did run out of ammo at the end, so you, you had that option. There's plenty of time here where you could have swapped that out. Now, if looking at this ring, um, I would try to position myself somewhere kind of between these teams. So, like, I'm basically right now you're on the outside, kind of not even in the ring yet. So, um, you could easily get punished by a team that's kind of in the middle there. And it could be a pretty rough time, you know, if they decide to get, keep you in the zone because you're not even in, you know, you're not even in when you're back here. Especially on the final ring as well. You're basically furthest, you're the team that's furthest from the ring. I'd say being up on the right side, so let's see. Yeah, just sitting up on the right side, using the high ground over to the right there, that'd probably be the best option. And then as the ring starts moving, portal somewhere where you're not going to be between two teams. Because that's kind of one of the things you did here uh, at the end. You kind of put yourself in between two teams. You, had, you was basically fighting two teams at the same time. Not something you want to do. You want to let them fight it out a bit, and then you come in. So if you keep, keep on the very edge of the ring or portal somewhere where you're unsandwiching yourself from uh, you know a certain situation so 
yeah. Um, I'm not sure, like, here. Um, you probably could have got away with crouch, like, crouch spamming yeah. next to the box and got some ammo, because you really do need it. Um, plus, just looking at the loot here, um, you, you, like, you have, like, 23 bullets or something, I think. You really don't have a lot of ammo. Mm hmm yeah, you, you got 35 ammo at that point. Really not much ammo, so it's, it's pretty much important as hell that you get that ammo there. There was another box on the right there. I'm not sure if that was checked. There's boxes here as well. Because the ammo situation, you want to consider checking just to make sure because you, you have so little ammo, you're not even going to be able to kill maybe one or two people. So yeah, you had enough time to grab stuff right here. You definitely wanted to grab that stuff. No grenades as well, which is going to be hard. You know, for the final rings, they can be really useful. Could have been some on those bodies back there. So you you portaled really early, so your teammates kind of, I think, got into a fight here. And also you position yourself as the enemy team is on your right, and the other enemy team that was already in the ring is on, on your left as well. So now you're in the middle of two teams. Um, it, you, you either kind of wait it out and just go in with the ring so you can kind of let the other teams bump into each other and start fighting, or you position yourself so you're in a good spot and not sandwiched between you know two teams. It can, it can be kind of hard in these rings. Just try to figure out where people are and try to you know keep your distance or get into a good spot where you know it's hard for them to actually gang up on you, you know, both teams. Anyway, you portal in. Now, your teammates should have followed you probably immediately just so you can, you know, be together and fight together. But they didn't follow you immediately, it took some big damage. So you're fighting the team on the left here. Uh, the other team's gonna be a bit of a problem at some point. Basically, obviously, when it comes to three squads left, this is where we want the other teams to fight and then you just finish them off. If you, you know, get involved in it, you can possibly end up losing the match. But uh, the only kind of reason you did manage to get top three is because you escaped long enough for the other team to die. Okay, didn't get too much damage onto that guy, and your triple take isn't going to be super useful. Definitely take off the scope and use it more of a, like a shotgun now as well, even though you don't have much ammo for it. Um, you just got to work with what you've got. Now, Rampart's not in too bad of a spot, though. He does have some good cover. He's got his cover set up as well. He's on high ground, so you could consider repositioning to him and, you know, partying up with him up there instead. Because everybody seems to be like, there's, there's people below him right here. If he's on the high ground, he's got a pretty good spot to, you know, deal with them, and he's not going to get shot from different directions as well. So you kind of fight mostly on the low ground, and you've kind of positioned yourself in a spot where you're easily going to get third party here. Yeah? The other team can come in at any point and mess you up. But yeah, you do punish this team and manage to get some good damage onto them. When the other team comes in, it's probably best to just hide and try to get a battery off and, and focus on the survival game. Because, yeah, the other team hasn't really lost many members. They're basically a full team, so... This team that you've been fighting here the whole time, they have lost members and they're about to die, so that's why getting away and just trying to survive is the best thing, just so you get top two. Which happens right here when you actually... Exit phase. So yeah, um, in general, you know, if there's two teams, two enemy teams you got to deal with, um, try to attack the team that is strongest because you know you basically you work with the enemy team to attack the other enemy team that's stronger. You whittle down the numbers so you're not dealing with this situation. I mean, at the end of the game, they still have like three members, I think. You have at least two. Oh, there's a third. Yeah, I was pretty sure they had three. So they have three members. They sh that shouldn't really happen. Um, it's the final fight. That they should lose members, you know, during that process. So somehow they've actually managed to avoid fighting for long enough that it's allowed them to still be a full team at the end end of the game, which is kind of what you want instead. And that's because they kind of held back. They stayed up here on the left side. And when you attack the other team, they just kind of waited for you guys to fight each other and got your gauge of a low and stuff like that. And then. They just, you know, joined in at the end and finished you guys off. You want to be the team that does that. So you got to either position in the ring early, or you got to kind of come in slowly with the ring, try to stay on the edge of the ring, and hopefully in a good spot as well. For example, up on the tree bit, that's a good place to be because the enemy team was on the low ground. They couldn't really get up there to you. So worth bearing in mind. So yeah, you did get a final two. So it was really good there, you know, making sure that you did survive a bit longer. Because obviously you get more points just from surviving here. So you're at 128, 
and when the enemy team dies 148 so it does help out a little bit but yeah we'll leave that there i want to see some more kind of interesting like gold, gold level games because you will face more difficult opponents here it might also force you to mix up your weapons a bit as well because the triple take um it doesn't really have a lot of things when it comes to you know taking a fight in close range you probably won't be pulling out a triple take very often hold on throat keeps getting uh clogged up so yeah, when it comes to, like, high levels of play, I mean, gold isn't super high level, but there should still be some decent players in there, you know, from the previous season. Um, you know, demoted, but no. Yeah. So it could be more interesting. You might face some more difficult opponents then, and it might also force you to play some different weapons just to kind of, you know, work with that. Because just poking a, di a distance with the triple take is nice and might work at this level. But when it comes to high levels, if you not have, if you don't have the ability to fight people in close range, because that's where a lot of fights are going to happen, uh, and they're going to be concluded there in close range. If you don't have the weapons to properly deal with that, you know, you will get kind of screwed over. It's like, that's why I'm so kind of big on the Mastiff. The Mastiff's so good in close range. Uh, if Basically, if you get into a fight with someone in close range, and they have a Mastiff and you don't, you're going to lose. Yeah, we'll leave that there. Get into some gold level games. I'm I, overall though pretty good with you know your decision making on moving around and stuff like that and, and when when to take your fights and when to disengage that was good stuff. You can queue up for another game now. Yeah, I was looking at my stat line for last game because I didn't actually look at it. Have you made an effort to like really try to get to diamond before? Yeah, uh, like a season or two ago. Last season, where is it? I think not that last season. Is it ranked season four? Split one, I just did not care for ranked. Split two, I kind of pushed hard for it. Then ended up with the uh, top plat three, like halfway through plat three. I think the mm -hmm. highest I got him was. Season, where is it? Was season four? Because I had a trio I do a uh, played with in ranks for a bit. Mm. All right. Yeah, I mean, I would say um, for most decent players, they should be able to reach diamond without problem, even if you're solo queuing. Um, it's just about applying just the right strategies to the right rank. You can't do the same strategy that you would do in bronze, silver, gold. You know. Uh, trying to grind up to diamond, it won't really work. You have to adapt your strategy as you go along. So you really have to kind of mix up your play styles in the different ranks. You you want to be kind of, I'd say in the lower ranks, just use uh, very aggressive close range weapons, attack people, you know, get get kills. It doesn't really matter. You won't really lose that much. Bronze, you lose literally nothing. So kills are just a plus no matter what. Yeah. Um, silver, don't really lose that much, so it's going to be similar as well. With gold, you probably find that you do get third party quite a bit more. Um, difficulty of you know the actual player skill wise goes up a little bit, but it's not it's not that much I would say. Um, platinum is where it's like there's a lot of third party in. Um, the skill level of the players is okay, but it's mostly the third party and you have to worry about. So you probably will have a slower play style you know, when you go into Platinum and you're trying to make it to Diamond. Uh, your play style will probably slow down quite a bit because if you if you just play aggressively and trying to fight all the time, you know, there's going to be chances where you're going to get third party and screwed over for it. And you can't always just disengage from them as well because sometimes you're trapped or you know, you're sandwiched in a really bad position where you have nowhere to go. The Devo's in the crafting system right now, that's fun. Turbo's in there as well. That's going to be fun to deal with late game. Yeah. Who a low buff. The weakest legend in the game, love it. A lobo main. <laughs> They're trying to figure out ways to fix her. I mean, it's not that hard. Just make her queue better. It kind of sucks. Make the market so she can take more items out. Uh, where do I want to drop? 
Let's make a choice. Land here. Yeah. Here we go. Ready up. One squad to our left. I don't know if they're going open look or epi. Looks like they're stretching the open look. That was a decoy team. Oh, we look safe. Your mic's a bit quiet. I can't quite hear you. Oh, let me turn my game up a bit. Is that better? Yes. I only have one bat, no cells. Alistar here. Here. Level two. This screen shows is kind of stuttery. You might want to turn your text resuming budget down. It might help with the performance mm -hmm. a bit. Some video settings. Just turn the text resuming budget really low. It's only textures, so it might look kind of bad, I guess, but it'll, it'll be fine. No, wait, I want... There we go. Uh, pick any energy you find. Sure. I have a uh, 60 on a uh, bolt. The ring's closing in a minute. We're not close. Might be something good this way. Yeah, it's uh pretty bad still. <laughs> I also have a ninety. I also have ninety-five uh, mats, so I can craft some. Yeah, these screen shares like super bad right now. I'm not sure if something changes, like you open something else, but yeah, it's pretty bad. I can. I try to fix it. That's alright, get some ammo. Forget that. Let me try this. See if that works better. I just reset it. Evo still here. Level two. Nah, it's still doing it. Only the best for my friend. Draft time. Okay. Give me one second. 